I don't want to misrepresent this and tell you that the uh, Zoom H1N is going to perform like the Sony PCM D100 uh, by just adding a few microphones. But I will say this, uh, that you can get a lot better sound out of the, uh, the H1N uh, doing nature recording with these microphones. They just sound spectacular <laughs> compared to the built-in mic. Uh, the in, in a lot of testing I've done, the Sony picked up other sounds that the Zoom H1N did not pick up. Uh, desirable sounds and uh, so uh, you, you do get what you pay for but you can squeeze a lot more out of what you bought if you uh, make a few tweaks so I'm testing all three of these the uh, the zoom h1n the Sony PCM d100 which is supposed to be a superb audio recorder and I'd have to agree with it and the zoom h2n for this test, all three recorders are set to maximum sensitivity, maximum volume, and uh, they, you know we're using the built-in microphones. These microphones I split, I spread apart for better stereo separation. Has movable mics, and I spread them apart, uh, and these are extremely good mics. Uh, I want maximum separation out here in nature, out by this uh, this frog preserve here. They're quite active. These are the cardioid mic, four mics with uh, two-channel stereo it's set up for. Um, the built-in mic is not uh, uh, the preferential mic for recording nature on this recorder, that's for sure. I'm gonna be recording the same sounds of these frogs here. These are wood frogs. I should look them up. They freeze solid in the winter. Their heart stops, they stop breathing, and they can last seven months that way, uh, probably longer. But I'm here to record them with a uh, Zoom H1N a Zoom H2N, which has multi mics in it, and a uh, Sony DCM uh, PCM D100, which is a top of the line recorder. I'm going to start off with all three recorders set up uh, for maximum audio, so the the sound is sensitivity is turned up all the way to maximum on on all three of them, just to uh, kind of get a level set on this. There's plenty of noise around here. I have a jet flying over and there's a highway off about a half a mile that way and I sometimes get highway noise. So uh, that's no problem to filter that out later but I just want to get the raw sound. One problem I'm having is I cannot do the test with external mics on this uh, Zoom setup. It's, uh, it doesn't, it, they're just not registering when I plug them in. Uh, so I'll, I'll fiddle around with it a little more. Not having any luck trying to uh, plug in any of the mic, the two mics I have into this uh, Zoom H2N. It's still recording on the, uh, on the internal mics. This is at level 10. Putting level 9, putting level 8. With a handful of uh, cables and uh, two microphones, um, you can get really good sound for nature recording out of this recorder. I'm not talking about voiceovers. I'm not, you know, if you want to capture birds and frogs and things, this is uh, a great way to go. Not quite as good as this, but a lot less expensive and very portable. It's a fun rig. I take it out a lot, but I would not take it out without these uh, extra few doodads here. And I'll go through those. For any kind of recording on the move, I need a, uh, a sound insulating uh, grip. And uh, this one works really good uh, for me. Um, it also has a rubber washer up on here, which is, uh, helps insulate this from the noise. And if you keep your hand pretty still here, you can move around quite a bit and not make any noise. For uh, noise isolation, I have this uh, little uh, shock mount, 
and it uh, comes with a 5 8 screw adapter, which my tripods are not, so I went and put on a, a quarter inch adapter, that little stud in the middle, and now I can use it on a quarter inch tripod. And uh, what this is, is a uh, you can screw your audio or camera up here, and it has a rubber fins here, which uh, provide pretty good sound isolation. They help quite a bit, and plus I have a rubber grip, and the combo uh, works out pretty well. Um, you still have to be quiet when you move your hands, but it, it does reduce the noise down. That uh, plastic uh, hand grip that comes with the uh, with the H1N when you buy the kit, that's a joke. It's a noisemaker. It's terrible. <laughs> Throw it away. It's horrible. <laughs> uh, but uh, this is pretty good. I'll have uh, links to this in the uh, comments. So I think it's like $20 for this thing, but it's, it's worth it for me. This is the mic I'm using. It's got a 360 degree sensitivity. And I have a small uh, windscreen for it. And it's very compatible with the uh, Zoom H1N. I'll have a link in the bottom of this uh, in the comments so you can uh, get the exact mic. But uh, it's uh, a really good match for me. Uh, it's good for what I'm doing out here, nature recording. You wouldn't necessarily want to use this for voiceovers or anything. It's very sensitive, but uh, uh, pretty happy with it. $27 I think it costs, which is a pretty decent deal for me. And uh, so for, for two of those, for like $60, you can have a whole setup with a few cables and uh, start recording. Nature sounds. For this test, I'm using these uh, external mics. I have two of them here. They come down into a cable and they, uh, they, they go into a stereo Y connector and they connect into the, uh, the H1N. Uh, these are very sensitive mics and they're turned up quite high. So I'm going to uh, see how things go. I'll try a couple of different audio levels and see what I can grab here. And for, uh, for headphones, I'm just using a pair of uh, earbuds. I tried a number of different ones. These are magnetic. I can hook them around my neck and they won't come off. So I think that's handy out in the field. And yeah, this is not studio quality, <coughs> but it gives me an idea of what's going on. So this little setup offers one huge advantage. It's small and lightweight, very portable runs on a couple of AAA batteries for a long time and 32 mega memory lasts a long time so uh, this is a great field recorder uh, for me for what I'm doing I don't say it's the best but <laughs> at this price it's the best and uh, I have a nice uh, $25 uh, bag which I'm using as an audio bag and it's uh, it's a real portable setup I love it so this little band bag I bought it for 25 bucks on uh, Amazon and it's, uh, it's some kind of tactical bag, and I'm not a tactical guy, but uh, it's got a nice zipper pocket back here. Everything is lined in orange, so you can see inside of it. It's really a low-profile bag, not meant to carry a lot. It came with one pocket here and molly straps here. I bought a, uh, a small pouch to put on here to give me uh, more room for batteries and uh, earphones so I can listen when I'm doing audio recording. And in here, I can uh, fit my, uh, my camera, I have a portable radio with me, small pair of binoculars, and my camera will fit in here too. So uh, this is perfect for on-the-move uh, fun. I like to go for a lot of walks and a lot of hikes, and uh, this is a real lightweight system for me to use. That's a wood frog. This guy can be frozen solid for several months. His heart stops, his breathing stops, but he'd be thawed out and he'll uh, just come back fine. And in weather like this, early spring, it may freeze again. They can be refrozen and they'll do the same thing. They, you should read about them. They have an amazing capability. This is a vernal pool. Vernal pools don't have fish and frogs love them. They will travel a long ways. Frogs and salamanders will travel a very long distance to get to a place like this. They can lay their eggs and the, uh, the fish won't eat them because there's no fish here. So uh, special spots in nature.